You are about to participate in a great adventure. Hit in the air to deep right center. Pike open on the low side. Greg Pike, believe me, sweetie. I got enough to feed the needy. No need to be greedy. Mad friends with Benzes and C notes by the layers. I love it when you call me Big Papa. It is high. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! It is far. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. You're listening to the Tom and Jerry Show. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. Back for another Football Friday, one of the few we have left. Yep. But it's, it's getting, playoff time. Uh, yeah, so. it's getting, getting close. Uh, quick, a uh, couple of coaching, yeah. hiring, and firings. Uh, a very surprising firing. Cowboys fired their defensive coordinator, Rob Ryan. Which is absolutely <sighs> one of the stupidest yeah, things I, I mean, think Jerry Jones has done, and Jerry Jones has done some <laughs> stupid things in his career. This, but this is definitely this, yeah, one this of the caught, worst. I think everyone off guard because he improved that defense and big time. Yeah, big so, time. And I think the thing that especially made people wonder about it was the comments he had with yeah. pointing out the two games that yeah against the Bears and the Seahawks. I mean, although there were some drives in that game from the opposing teams, like long drives, yeah. but they were pretty much on the field the whole time in those the two well, games he pointed out, especially now, the Bears game. Seattle, right in the first five minutes, they were down 10 nothing. Yeah. With a block punt for a touchdown mm-hmm. and then uh, interception. Um, so right there, you know, you're down two, 10 nothing yeah. in Seattle, which is probably the toughest place to yeah, play I was, the, in the, the NFL. Hardest place. Now, Jerry Jones came out and said, you have to go into Seattle and beat Seattle. You know, every team obviously wants to beat yes. every team yeah. that they play. But Seattle was undefeated at home. And they beat some pretty good teams yeah. at home. One of them, they was, beat the, San Francisco. One of them was the fluky thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. They beat the Patriots too, which is, I mean, they played a lot of good teams so, at home. And they won every time. So, you, you know... He's like I feel like he's just reaching for things. He he just wants to he wants to show his authority. Yeah. Kind of. And the funny thing is even in that Seattle game, I believe the offense got shut out in the second half. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't point out anything on Nothing Jason about Garrett. the offense. See and that and that's my problem. Now, Jason Garrett, I believe, is probably one of the worst offensive coordinators. It's he's a good coach. Yeah. I think he could work on the discipline a little bit more, but uh, play calling is just not his forte. And you know what? They have Callahan on that on that coaching staff mm-hmm. that brought his team to the play to the, to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl actually. So he's more than qualified to do that. Yes. And I think that's what they might do because uh, Jerry Jones did say that he's going to try to change uh, the play calling. Yeah, so I don't know if they're going to bring in an offensive coordinator or mm-hmm. they're going to you know. Have Callahan take over. They just—it seems like they've uh, just lacked the discipline ever since. Uh, yeah, Bill Parcells left. But they now never uh, had that coach that would get in the players' face. Exactly, and that—it seems that's what they need. They need some. Wade Phillips never did it. Jason Garrett's oh never God. done it. And that it's apparent that that could be what it, this team needs. Yeah. they need a little bit See, of discipline, and they won't make the stupid mistakes that they make with the the penalties and going the back penalties. to the defensive. Uh, side like you know with Rob Ryan 2010 they under Wade Phillips Mm -hmm. they had the 25th ranked defense 2011 when they hired Rob Ryan they had the 14th ranked defense then this year they had the 19th yeah but they had the top 10 going into all the injuries. Yeah, they had a lot you know, of injuries. Th- and that's another thing. Now, what Rob Ryan did with 11 guys put on IR, Yeah, five which were starters. He had guys coming off couches. As, exactly. As me, exactly. But. He had guys like Brady Papinga, who probably nobody knows, yeah, but he no, played for people, Green Bay. Exactly. Um, you had Dan Connor. You had... Uh, Ernie Sims, probably nobody knows yep. who that is. Yep. 
you had Danny McRae. Nobody knows who that yeah, is. I mean, you know, he, it's just he was able to coach them and exactly being able to. They may not have been superstars, obviously, but they were able to compete and exactly. You know. And now, and now you look at it again. Now the guys that were injured, Sean Lee, yeah, one who of the, is pretty very, much, very underrated middle yeah, linebacker. Yeah, who's pretty much right now probably one of the top middle yes. linebackers in the league. Bruce Carter, who came in was after Sean phenomenal. Lee, who was playing phenomenal, yeah. he was out. So then they were going on to their fourth, fifth, and sixth linebackers. Then you go into you know, then you had Br- uh, uh, Barry Church, who's a you know a decent safety. Yeah. Better than Danny McRae, obviously. Yes. Um, then, you know, you get Ratliff, who gets hurt. Then you bring in his backup, Josh Brent, gets into an accident, kills his friend, yep. which was a teammate. Yep. He's gone. So now you got this guy, Sean Lismore, who's all right. Sensible was out for a little while, too, wasn't he? It's just like, it, you know, then you had Coleman, who was their best uh, run stopper, out. <laughs> It, it it was just you know that that the was Marcus the, Ware was all all banged up. The he last was hurt game, the last couple of games, arm. like the last six weeks. He was yeah. he was playing with an injury. Yeah, whether it be his shoulder, his neck, or his, I believe his he's elbow surgery on yeah. this week. So it just so it's just you know that's you can't he put just the blame on him. Yeah, he just you know <laughs> just as when like there were probably more. Knocks on the offense than there were on the defense, but exactly. he, he took it out on the defense, exactly. which exactly. doesn't make sense. It's it, it, there's some puppeteering going on there with him and Jason Garrett. Yeah, and then the other game that he brought up was obviously the Bears game at home. Yeah, but Romo threw five interceptions in that. I, game. I don't know how how you can bring this game up. I I don't either. I mean, they did. Don't get me wrong. They did play bad. Yeah. Uh, but they, that was the first game that they they've given up a hundred yards to a, a wide receiver. But I mean, it was Brandon. It's, it's a tough game when you're getting no like confidence, no motivation yeah. from the offense. Exactly, you're just always constantly going on the field. You're gonna have no motivation to stop anyone. You're gonna be tired. Yeah, and you're gonna give up yards. And uh, the names that have been going around is Monty Kiffin. Yeah, who uh, <laughs> who is a Tampa two defense. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reason why. Uh, the Cowboys, you know, fired Rob Ryan because Rob Ryan runs a three four. Mm-hmm. I think they want to change that. Yeah, I think they want to either go to four three or Tampa two. Tampa. So you know who knows. Um, but then also another name uh, that they brought up was uh, Ray Horton from Arizona. Mm-hmm. So who knows which way they go? I think they're leaning more towards Monty Kiffin. Um, so Both we'll, aren't bad we'll though. See. Arizona yeah. had a night pretty. I had a good defense yeah. before the uh, big losing streak. Cause so we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. They also fired their uh, running backs coach Skip Pete, which you know it's whatever I guess. Yeah. Um, but the Browns hired Rob Chudzinski. He was actually uh, grew up a Browns fan. Grew up in Ohio. Yeah. He was there twice. Had two stints there. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a good, it's, it's, it's good it's hiring a good hire. for them. Yeah. People may not like it because they don't really know who, who exactly yeah. he is. But uh, he's a good hire for them because they know he's passionate about the team because yeah. it's, it's his team, you know. That's the team he grew up with. So it's a good hire for him. He, uh, runs, a, he just runs a good offense. He's had, yeah. I mean, he was the offensive coordinator with Derek Anderson, and he got to the Pro Bowl twice. So... And uh, he was Cam Newton's offensive coordinator the past two years, and he yeah. obviously did good things. So it's a nice, nice fit. Another coaching, uh, you know, firing. Uh, Jaguars fired Mike Malarkey <laughs> after one year. Yeah, I mean, he would say after one year, like, what's going? On? Why would yeah. they do that? But it's a new GM. Old GMs <laughs> want their own head coach. They yeah. want to get their own head coach. So, and uh, you know, a lot of the. Uh, Rumors that were going around after the season was that Tebow was going to be going to the Jaguars. Yeah. Well, the GM, the GM shut just that came, down. <laughs> just came out and shut that down. Yeah. So uh, who knows where he's going to end up? But uh, and that's that's good that he did that though. Cause <laughs> yeah. He needed to. Because yeah. If he didn't, you don't it, want it was going to get harassed every day about yeah. that. Um. So let's get into the playoff games this weekend. Uh, Saturday, two very good games. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the first game is the Baltimore Denver game at Denver. And uh, 
spread on this one's 10 favorited uh by denver really which is, i think it's a little point. rough that's 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 a, that's a little very that's a little rough. harsh for, i mean this is a playoff, a playoff game, game with exactly a team they're playing a team with i mean although the broncos did beat them earlier in the year but this is they're a whole different team yeah. now with the ray lewis thing and just they seem to be clicking a lot more so yeah 10 points that, on a veteran team that knows how to win on the road in the playoffs yeah. is that's a little harsh the game uh that they played early in the season. Denver beat uh, Baltimore 34-17 in Baltimore, too. Yeah. So, uh, Peyton Manning has a nine-game win streak against the, Vi- uh, the Ravens. Yeah, he's he's beat them up. So, uh, you know, it, it's always – I I love watching Ray Lewis play Peyton yeah, Manning because it's two. just like a chess match. Yeah. You know, you know, Peyton Manning's known for all of his the you audibles, know, audibles at the line. But you know what, Ray Lewis is he'll known match for him. Yeah, exactly. He'll match him all game. And I was watching something on uh, NFL Network uh, about Peyton Manning talking about Ray Lewis, and he was like, you know, I'll get to the line, I'll see exactly what he's, you know, what he's running, and he's like, I'll change it at the line, but he's like, Ray Lewis changes it right away, <laughs> yep. and then he's like, you know, he's at the line saying, oh, watch out for the screen, watch out for the screen, and then he's like, I gotta call a timeout because he knows exactly what play it is. So it's amazing to watch these yeah. two play. Uh, two f- obviously future Hall of Famers, um, probably two of the greats at, at the, their yeah, position. At the position. So uh, it should be a very good game. And the whole Ray playing on one arm, he's not playing one hundred percent on that's thirteen let's get tackles. Real people, yeah, let's, he's thirteen back. tackles. <laughs> he's back. So you know it, it's going to be a very good game. I just see a lot of confidence out of the Ravens right now. I, um, that's got me feeling. It's got me feeling pretty good. I don't. I, it's go, you're going I'm into not, Denver. I know we are, but I don't. Just, I don't. I don't. There's know. a reason why Ray Lewis did what he did. Yeah. And oh, I know. He's not I, and stupid. I, I said that so too. I just. I just see a lot of confidence out of this team. I mean, Ray Rice had a terrible game last week. Yeah. And we're talking about one of the best running backs in the league. He's gonna. That's have, gonna be. He's gonna have a big game. I think. That's, because, that's gonna be the main thing of yeah. this game. They have to. You know. They have. And to I really ball. think he's gonna do something because. He's man at himself mostly yeah. about last week. Like he did that to himself with the two fumbles. Yeah. He doesn't fumble a lot and he doesn't he's not gonna like that. So I think he's gonna have a big bounce back game. And then when Bernard Pierce had over a hundred yards last game, I think they're gonna I think they're gonna they have to run the ball a lot on this yeah. defense. Um, Keep hitting off the field. Last last week they only gave up nine points to the Colts, but that was Andrew Luck, his first playoff yeah. game. Um you're going up against Peyton Manning now. This is the real deal. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the thing is, Denver's got a very good defense. Very good defense. Uh, Baltimore gave up 100, and I think, 50 yards rushing last week. So, you know, if they I'm can... I'm not scared of North Sean as much yeah, as I am of Peyton. If they can really, you know, stiffen up that rush defense, I think it's going to be harder because then you're going to have, you know, Peyton Manning yeah. throwing the ball more. Um the Ravens, and I think a real advantage the Ravens have is uh, Joe Flacco's one of his favorite targets is Dennis Pitta, the tight yeah. end. And I think they have to use him a lot this game. Yeah. Because they have to take advantage of the matchups that he'll get. So if they, I think that if they can do that, because I, I know he'll go to him because it's one of his favorite yeah. targets. So I think that that's a big, big matchup. I was looking at the numbers yesterday. Uh, against Denver, Joe Flacco does not have great numbers no. uh, when Denver sends five or more players on a blitz. So I have a, you know, smile idea that... <laughs> I do have a smile on my face, but uh, I have an idea that Denver will be bringing a lot of blitzes because Flacco does show that he, you know, does make some stupid yeah. mistakes at times. He holds on to the ball way too long. Yeah, so... Uh, but this game's going to be good. I still think Denver takes this game, though. Yeah, you, you would in your Von Miller jersey. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, the next game, I think, is the Green Bay game, right? Yes, yes. The night game. Uh, actually, what is it? Four, is it 4 o'clock game? No, that's what the Ravens game is. Oh, so yeah, yeah so Niners, it is the night game. The night game. All right, so, um, yeah, this it's Green Bay against San Francisco in San Francisco. Uh, they played in week one. San Francisco beat... Green Bay thirty to twenty two. Um is this was the first game of the season though. Yeah. So but this is still a tough matchup for Green Bay because Well now you had your you know, the first game of the season you had Alex Smith under center. Yeah. Um 
this game is going to have Kaepernick. So it's just a total, you know, different dimension mm-hmm. that uh, San Francisco is bringing to, you know, Green Bay here. But I think the, I think the big thing in this game is when San Francisco is on defense, Green oh, Bay's yeah. on that. I think that's the matchup everyone's. Yeah. Because the Niners defense is, is one of the best. Yeah, it's one of the best. It's probably the most physical defense. They they just know how to play group defense yeah. and and Green Bay's the, offense yeah, is one they, of the best. Too. So it's it's going to be a uh, this is probably the one hurdle, for, I would say, for Aaron Rodgers. Cause, yeah. you know, I'm obviously I'm riding with Green Bay for the Super Bowl. So I would say if they can win this game, they probably they'll make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I would imagine. So, but it's tough. Well, San it's Francisco a tough game. San Francisco is 14 and three in Candlestick yeah. under Harbaugh, but they are playing Aaron Rodgers, who's the top-rated quarterback. Um, San Francisco's twelve and four at home in the div- in the divisional round, but one and five against Green Bay in playoffs in the, hi- yeah. in the history. That was a lot of Brett Favre, though. Yeah. Um, so you know it, it's going to be an interesting game. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, you know, you know everybody's talking about you know Forty Nine ers defense and Green Bay's offense. I think it's all going to come down to Kaepernick. He's, yeah, he's got a. I, I think he's it's gonna, you know it depends on what he's going to bring. Um, I think they're going to be able to run the ball fine against Green Bay. Green Bay's, you know, rush defense isn't that good. They did hold Adrian Peterson last week to under 100. Yeah, I, I mean, think that was I think that was more of them trying to prove a point because Adrian Peterson killed them twice. Yeah. He had 200 yards plus yeah, in, the in both games, the games. So. I think it was just more of that for Green Bay. Yeah. I think, as you said, I think San Francisco will be able to run the ball. Yeah. And then... Minnesota wasn't even that game was that game terrible was a joke. because Joe Webb was complete. He was not ready for that no, game at all. So. Not at all. Kaepernick, obviously, I I he's like him better than Alex Smith yeah. because yeah, he's he's got a lot of experience under his belt. Yeah. So and and he takes the chances that Alex Smith and Joe Webb didn't. And he's pl- he's played the tough teams before. Yeah, you know, knows, it's not like this is the first tough team that he's mm, gonna be yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, it's definitely going to be a good game. Uh, the matchups that we just said is going to be, you know, keyed in this game. Um, but I do think it's all on Kaepernick. I, yeah. I think if he if he does what he's been doing all season, if he doesn't make the mistakes, I think San Francisco pulls this game off. I would I would agree. I'm going to agree because in a way I would because Kaepernick, if he does have a good game, the Niners are going to win. Yeah. Although I want I pick Green Bay to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. But I'll agree with you on that part. I may not necessarily want it to happen because I yeah. want Green Bay to go all the way. <laughs> and I hope my dad's not listening to this. But I will agree if uh, if Kaepernick goes off, they will win this game. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's definitely it, it's definitely going to be a good game. Now, I, I think that's Saturday, the game of the week. Saturday's games are definitely going to be... Uh, the, better, the better night yeah. of football. Yeah. So, uh, but then we're going on to Sunday... Uh, we got Seattle at Atlanta. And I'm excited about this game. This game I'm really excited yeah. about. I'm I, really riding Seattle. Uh, so am I. The bandwagon, Seattle, totally. I, I love Pete Carroll. I do not like Atlanta whatsoever. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't like how everybody thinks that this team is, you know. Elite. Yeah, one of Matt the best Ryan in the league. Elite. It's just, you know, it's not right. Yeah, their their record shows they're number one in, in the yeah. NFC. But... I just don't see it from this team. You no. know, yeah, they're playing at home. They're tough to play at home. But you know what? They could have lost a couple of games at home this yep. year. And they, you know, they pulled it out with the and skin in their teeth. This is probably the the hottest team by yeah. far in football going into Atlanta. Yeah, definitely. Probably playing the best defense out of any team in football. And you moment. know what? I think this is the best matchup, uh, you know, for any team going up against Atlanta's offense. Yeah, I this mean, is you're the per- coming yeah, in the perfect you're, team. You're definitely. coming in with you know two six six three six four cornerbacks going up against Julio Jones, two of the biggest and over the middle Roddy receivers. White. Yeah, two guys that really need to be you know, first of all, you can match their height. Yes, Julio Jones is a big dude. Yes, he is. Um, and I think you ha- you're gonna have to be physical with these guys, and I and think these guys are they're the gonna be physical. Yeah, yeah of they're, course, they're perfect. So uh, this is gonna be a very you know very good matchup to see 
you know, Julio Jones against Richard Sherman and then Browner against Roddy White or vice versa, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever it is. Seattle's got the safeties too. I yeah, mean, you, got Earl, is, you got Earl Thomas yeah. and then you got Cam Chancellor. This is a dangerous team. Definitely, definitely. I mean, they did take a big blow with um, Chris Clemens yeah, with, yeah, with the, the torn ACL. ACL. Um, but you know what? You have Bruce Irvin. I was, you know, gonna I was gonna say, if there's one thing on defense you can kind of replace, it's like the pass Defensive, rushers. Yeah. You know, I so, mean, they may not have like the exact like the power and the moves. And but you stuff also like have that, you got Red. They're Ryan, doing the same Red thing. Bryant. So Red yeah. Bryan in the middle, uh, Bruce Irvin. You know, it's gonna I, be yeah. They'll be they'll be okay with yeah. that. I mean, it's it's a loss, but it could be worse. Yeah. <clears throat> and I I I I personally I think Seattle's gonna. I think they're going to crush them. And and then on the other side, you know, uh, Atlanta's defense not good. No. It's not good. A little overrated. Yeah. Um, you got Marshawn Lynch coming into this game. He's the third rush, uh, you know, third yeah. best rusher in the league. Seattle's just big. If, like, if, yeah. you, if you think about it, like, we were just team. talking about, like, the corners, how big they are, the safeties, they're physical. They're, yeah. They, they're, right, they're right up on and you, you know pushing and then you, you, hitting you, and then you talk about You go about to their Lynch. offense, yeah. and you know what? The, they have small guys, but they're feisty yeah, guys. Yeah. Like Golden Tate, yeah, he's exactly. not the biggest wide receiver, mm-hmm. but he's you know he he's feisty. Like he you know he really gets into it with, yep. with guys. Uh, Sidney Rice, another guy that gets into it with you know people over the middle. He'll yeah. catch those over the middle. He doesn't care. Uh, and then of course Marshawn Lynch, who's just a yeah, bruiser. We can <laughs> you we'll know spring up the play from last year. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have Saints, to do. Yeah. Um, and then Russell Wilson, who's just. He's tiny, but he'll. You know what? And I, I, I was thinking after. about it the last two weeks. Um, you know what? I I can see him pulling off the rookie of the year. Oh, you would hope the the playoffs would you know give yeah. him a little boost in that because he's the only one left. Yeah. out of the three. But I can just I, I just feel like, you know, he's having. Obviously, he's not you know the first two like Luck and yeah RG3, he, he but, wasn't as glorified. But you know what? He was him. having the most consistent year Definitely. out of all of them. Definitely. So you know, I, yeah, he, he you know he had probably out of both the teams, I think he had the most around him. Mm-hmm. You know, the defense is one of the yeah. best, um, and the offense. You know, still has a couple of guys there. I think they could use one more wide receiver. I think yeah, I wide yeah, receivers. Definitely. You know, a little, but um, other than that, I think this is. You know, he probably had the most complete team because he's got a running back also, so yeah, he really didn't he, have to throw the ball that much. Uh, but he's doing his job. He's doing what he had to do. I would I would agree with you, especially with the playoff run he's going on. It just seems like these writers are so, like, stuck on guys like Peyton, yeah. but Tom Brady, and it just seems like Andrew Luck is one of those the yeah. guys that the media and the writers just fall in love with, and they'll always get the votes. So I I I would agree because Wilson did have a great year. Exactly. So, but it just seems like these writers are just so hooked on RG three and yeah. Andrew love. Luck. So, but I would love to see him pull it off. I, w- I, I would. I too. would really love to see him pull it off. I would like to see Alfred Morris get some votes too. Yeah, sixteen hundred oh, rushing yards. I, I mean, he had a really good season for a fifth round or sixth round. Sixth round know. pick. Yeah. Um. I I think that's like also another thing. They're not like the glorified number one, number two picks. Yeah, they're coming out the second, third round. But you know what? And uh, those are you know the guys that actually do you know, become something. Yeah, they become. I mean, look at Tom Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady. What was it? Fifth round. Yeah, sixth round uh, too. I think. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's kind of amazing. You know what you get Blade later in the, in the in the draft. That's where they, that's where it seems like the, the stars come from. Um, Atlanta's making their third consecutive playoff appearance. And they're zero and three. Yep. Well, zero and two. Well, yeah. No, zero and three against uh, under Mike Smith. Um, Tony Gonzalez most games in the in NFL history without winning a playoff game. Oh, he's zero and five. I mean, it is tough because he played for the Chiefs, but he he also put this on himself. Oh yeah, with definitely going to the Falcons. Definitely. So, um, Seattle Seattle was three and five on the road this year, but that. that they were competitive on the yeah. road, and just in like every game, they're they're a different team than past years where all they could do is win at home. Yeah, they're they're different than that now. Yeah, I mean they were undefeated at home this year, but uh, but last week was their first road playoff win since 
Yeah, good for them. When they were in the AFC. Yeah, I believe that was the longest streak. So, um, but I, I think Seattle takes this game. I think Seattle's going to win, uh, too. And you know, and I, I don't think the, the bye is going to help Atlanta. Yeah. I, I think it just hurt them a little bit more because Seattle grew they only had that, more momentum. Yeah, buys only seem to help teams that are, like, hurt. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. This, the bye helped New England with Rob Gronkowski. I mean, it, the buys, it seems that if your team's healthy, buys hurt you, yeah. I feel. Because it's too long of not playing – yeah, competitive. Like they're gonna come out rusty. Like it's inevitable. It's gonna see. Happen. My my thing is like if if you got a buy, but you have a, you know a veteran quarterback, I think you'll be all right. Yeah, someone that's been there before yeah. a lot. One, one like some I, games. I, I could feel like I feel like if Seattle had the buy, I think it would hurt them. Yeah, because right now they're running on momentum. Yeah, they're run. Yeah, um, exactly. You know they're running on their you know their rookie quarterback. Yeah. I, I just feel like yes. you know. Um. And I really, but I, 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 I gotta give props to Pete Carroll. Definitely. For you know, they spent all this money on Matt Flynn. Yep. The guy didn't start a game, and he put in Russell Wilson right. He from let the them. Start. He let them compete in yeah. the training camp, and Russell Wilson won. Exactly. I mean, everybody was you know down on Russell Wilson in the draft. Everyone said, "Why short. even take him when yeah. you just got Matt Flynn?" And because yeah, he, he was luck. small, you know, and he didn't get drafted. That high because it, uh, because yeah, of his size exactly, so it just shows you know, short guys could do it too, and you yeah uh, and <laughs> <laughs> and you would really hope like this if if Seattle does win, you would hope this game sends like a message to all these people that yeah. are riding the Atlanta bandwagon yeah and they're not a good team exactly. That's that's what that's what I'm hoping. And for you know what? Most. And that's I, why I'm hoping they lose. And I don't think Matt Ryan's that good of. No. A quarterback is everybody. Yeah, put up the, put up the regular season numbers. That yeah. doesn't mean anything to me. Um, but like we said, we both like Seattle in this game. And as good as everyone thinks Matt Ryan is, uh, yeah, I believe his uh, QBR in the playoffs is like a twenty eight point three. I believe I saw. I think the biggest number in Matt Ryan's career in the playoffs that I that I'm gonna look at for his whole career until he starts winning games is two points. Yeah, his defense. Two points in a playoff game. His defense outscored him against the Giants last year. Two points. That's when you know you're bad. When you're how do you, how do you get? How, I, I just it kind of aggravates me how you could go into the playoffs and only score two points. And he didn't even score him. Yeah, he got outscored by his own defense. I know it's. Pathetic. I mean, maybe because I'm, I'm kind of, you know, because it was the Giants. So no, I'm, I'm just that. I way, just think I, I think everyone was like, what? Yeah. Just ha- like the, the Giants are not that good. Exactly. And Although then, they won a Super Bowl, yeah. but they're another team that runs on momentum. Exactly. They're, so you know, that's why I I picked my you know the Seattle Seahawks for. It's all about that. It seems to be getting that's how you right win, time. just getting yeah. getting hot at the right time. Um, the last game, kind of like the Ravens. Yeah, last game, Houston and New England. Um, this this is the third game out of all four playoff games that the teams are already played during the regular season. Um, Houston, you know, going into the into New England in Week 15, uh, you know, pretty much best team in the league. Everybody's yep. talking about them. <coughs> um, and they put I up. I believe four- they had uh, one loss at that time yeah. of the game. They put up fourteen points, and New England put up forty-two. So, and it just feels like it's going to go not maybe that extreme, but it seems like it's going to go that way again. Yeah, and I just there's no way Houston's going to be able to stop Brady. It's in New England again. Um, the weakest part of the Houston defense is the secondary. You would have to say. Yeah, and. And we're we're talking about one of the best quarterbacks ever. Yeah. Who's got all his so many weapons. He got Gronkowski back. It's it's not I a mean, really good you, game. You wonder how, you know, good Gronkowski's gonna be because of, you know, the injury. Um but I think he's gonna be fine. Yeah, at the time the, like, the rest we were saying with the, the bye week yeah, like this the rest the, was perfect for them. Yeah, the rest was perfect for him. Um Forster in their previous game, he had forty six yards. But 
also they were down 14, I yeah, think 21 nothing in the first quarter. going to be tough. Right? So, um, I, I just don't trust Schaub in this game. I don't either. His last five starts, he's got one touchdown and four interceptions. I do not trust him in this game. He's not going to be able to yeah. keep up with Brady. J.J. Watt, league leader in uh, sacks. Went into that that game against New England, had zero sacks. That's, that's he just was, what New England you know, does. He was non-existent. In if that there's game. someone on the defense that's like the pass, the big pass rusher, they'll they'll that's shut him down real quick. But like and that's that's Belichick. Yep, exactly. And that's why you know when I look at all these teams, you know losing teams, you know obviously they have the talent because they're in the NFL. Yeah, you're not gonna have you you know a guy's not gonna come into the you know, into the league without having talent. Exactly. Yeah, it, you know, it's all about how you put the team together. And it, I, I just feel like all these teams, I think it's all on their coaches, how well they're coached, and how well the team's managed by the owner. And the New England's uh, just got everything right. But that's what I'm saying, yeah. you know. It's just you got the best coach in the league, and – you know what? An he, owner that he's completely not, turned around the franchise. He's not a guy that comes out and has to run his mouth and everything. Nope. He stays quiet. He knows how to beat every team. You know, he, he's just probably he's probably the best at you know setting up for a team. Yes, and he had two exactly. weeks, well, more like a week, uh, to set up for New England, uh, for Houston. But they already played each other. Yeah, so he, he didn't knows. have to do much. <laughs> yeah. you mean. He so. game planned perfectly for him week 15. And the best thing about Belichick, everyone thinks he's going to have the same game plan as week 15. He's yeah. not. It's going to be different. And that's why they're going to that's why they're going to beat him cuz Houston's probably sitting there watching the game film from last time saying, "Watch out for this, watch yeah, out for exactly. that." Exactly. And, he'll, and he'll it's going to be different. Thing. Exactly. It's so um last week uh JJ Watt against Cincinnati had two batted passes, one sack. His usual game. Yeah. Um you know he's got to show he's got to show up for this game if Houston thinks they're going to have a chance. Yeah, the, Forster has to run the Houston's ball. Houston's so. defense is going to have to make a play if they yeah. want to do at least yeah. be in this game. I would say make some kind of big play like Definitely. pick six, fumble something. Just you get they have to make something happen. Definitely. And, and as you said, Forster needs. To, don't be using a newspaper writer as motivation. How about oh, yeah, no. using a forty-two to fourteen loss as motivation exactly. instead? So I was, let's you not know, worry about what I, newspapers I would also, are saying. I would also use going from the first seed yeah. in the AFC, going into the last week of the, the season, exactly. and dropping down to the third seed. Exactly. So There's plenty of things you can use mo- for motivation yeah. instead of a, a newspaper writer who yeah. has never played football in his life. So I, I uh, just I'm, I want to see what you know Tom Brady could do against this team. I think he's going to do the same exact thing. Yep. I mean, he absolutely torched yep. the Texans' defense, which see, is one of the top defenses in the league. Yeah. If Houston wants to prove they're a legit contender, they got Matt them. Schaub has to do something. Yeah, and he has to show up. You know, this is big. You know, if if they want to be known as one of the best teams in the league, they have to beat New England. Yes, they have to beat New England he, this week. At least show show up. I mean, yeah, make it close, make it a game. Yeah. Making it at least not forty two fourteen. Yeah, exactly. So um but yeah, I I, I think this is another Yeah, this is this is going to New England. Um but that's about it. That's it for the games this weekend. Uh we could get into, you know, a few other news uh with other sports. Um Justin Upton rejected a trade to the Mariners. I could see that. Yeah, I that I would love to see the Yankees go out and after him. I would love to see that. So I think he's the power and the youth. Yeah, that he's a, he's the a Yankees nice ball needs. player. Um, People may not really you know like watch a lot of him because he he was out in yeah uh, he's Arizona Arizona so, but he is a nice player. If you see Definitely. some of his home runs, they are monstrous. Yeah. Um. The. Chargers met with uh, Gus Bradley, Ken Wisenhunt, Lovey Smith, and Bruce Arians. Yeah, All good that, coaches. I just remember uh, like Arizona and uh, San Diego were waiting to get general managers before getting a head coach. Yeah. So that's why it took so long for them to yeah, exactly. get all these interviews and everything like that. Exactly. But I, I, you would say San Diego is probably one of the best jobs available. 
Yeah. I mean, they got they got the you got the weather, San Diego. You live in California, but they also have a quarterback. I mean, we may, he may not. Yeah. I mean, but it's a quarterback at least. Exactly. A it, lot of these other teams hard to come yeah. by. <laughs> like Chicago has a quarterback too, but he's also a little iffy. People, yeah. a lot of people are iffy on him too. And so it's a toss up between those two jobs, but I wouldn't mind uh, going to San Diego. No. Um. Kovalchuk was thinking about staying in the KHL. Looks like he's coming back to the Devils. Um, so that's big news for the Devils. Uh, I mean, they did spend like yeah, hundred spend mil on him. On him. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I wanted to talk about the whole Kevin Garnett and Carmelo Anthony thing. Um, my take on it, obviously, you know, if you haven't heard about it. Garnett and Carmelo got into it on the court. After the game, Carmelo tried to storm the locker room for the Celtics. He got stopped by his teammates. So then he went back into his own locker room, got dressed, got everything ready, and then went out to the Celtics bus and waited for Kevin Garnett. Yep. Yeah, they got him on camera. Supposedly, said, supposedly Garnett said something about Carmelo's wife. Don't know if it's true. Obviously, nobody knows if it's true yeah, so no, except for the will. players. But um, my take on it is it, you know, it's you're an NBA player. You're a professional. This isn't, you know, the streets anymore. Yeah. You can't just go up to the bus and just wait for him to come to come mm-hmm. out. Well, you know, what were you gonna do? Exactly. Yeah, if yeah. he was to come out, what, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna fight him? Yeah. With and all the cameras around yeah, and everybody exactly. there. And if he said it just what he. Just like what he said, like you just, just wanted, wanted to, to talk. Him. Yeah, you don't have to wait outside the bus just yeah. to talk. So. I know. And these players have each other's numbers yeah, and everything. They talk to each other. There's plenty of. I ways. mean, let's be serious. Twitter and everything yeah. these days. Let's let's get you real, know. Carmelo. And like a whole other thing is, on top of being just an NBA player, he's probably one of the front runners for MVP right now. Yeah. And he's hurting his team by doing stupid things like this because exactly. he just got suspended. And look what happened last night. They exactly. lost. So. When you're, when you're an MVP type player, you got to act like that off exactly. the court. And Melo didn't do that, and he hurt his team, and, they, and, and like that's, that's why they lost. That's where like the difference is, I believe, with you know Carmelo and like you know the top players or yeah. the top legends exactly. ever to play the game. Like a lot of heat is on LeBron with the whole leaving Cleveland yeah. and everything, but he hasn't. He's done nothing he's off never, the court. Yeah. He's never gotten in trouble off the court. He's yeah. never gone into an opposing person's locker room waiting and yeah. he's never gotten in people's faces on the court and that's so that's how the best players should act and that's a, and like like another perfect example is Kobe Bryant he's not you know if you're if you're gonna you know come at him or something like that yeah. or you're gonna try to he's not gonna go up to you or like try to fight you exactly. or anything he's gonna drop 40 drop 50 yep. on you <laughs> you know, so that's he does it on the court exactly. So you know that's just another thing, or he'll just laugh at you. Exactly, uh, I've seen him do that yeah. a couple of times. Um, and my favorite was when uh, Ron Artest was with Houston, and Ron Artest was talking trash or whatever at the free throw line. Yeah, and uh, Kobe just laughed at him, <laughs> and then just dropped the bucket in front of his face. <laughs> so it's just like it, it's just funny, and I like I just wanted to get that off my chest. I feel like you know you're a professional. Yeah, you're you know. You could be like a kid's idol or something like exactly. that. Exactly, and kids are watching. You yeah, do that. like and now you're you're shown on camera waiting for, mm-hmm. you know. He's hurting. So he just hurt his MVP yeah, chances yeah, too. Yeah, it's just he hurt his team by getting suspended for exactly, a game. Exactly. It's you can't do things like that. Yeah, they're the second best and team in the East right now. Everybody was you know talking about why didn't Car- uh, Kevin Garnett get suspended also he didn't do anything he really didn't do anything you know he might have said something yeah but no one else knows what he said exactly they're on the court they had their confrontation and even the confrontation on the court kg was walking away it was carmelo going after him yeah he really didn't do anything so um i think everybody should just really look at the tape and yeah it's pretty obvious that it was Carmelo. but uh that's about it for Tom and Jerry show. Just yeah. one, uh, one quick thing with uh, baseball. No one getting elected into the Hall of Fame yesterday. Yeah, that's, actually, we could bring that up. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Because I, mean, 
how does someone that's I mean besides the steroid guys, but how does not one person yeah. not worthy enough of getting in? Like I'll agree with the Barry Bonds and see, and the that's Roger where Clemens. I disagree. You want them? In? I think they should be in it. I think in like a different like section thing, or I, I just feel like you know what they had the talent to do you know to do what they did. Maybe maybe the steroids added a little bit. First of all, Barry Bonds was never never found to to have yeah. done the steroids. They're just pretty much you know going by what you know other How guys have said. He was. Yeah, well that too. But I mean, I if mean, you look at him on uh, Pirates, yeah, yeah, I know. And look at him and in the career on scrawny, Giants, yeah. Because you look at that, but then you look at Ken Griffey Jr., who played probably just as long, if not yeah. longer, and he stayed pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. But I, I just feel like, you know, it's still, he's still never, it's it still never co- came yeah. out that he actually did the steroids. They have no proof that he did the steroids. You know, you go to, you know, Roger Clemens, um, I mean, supposedly they had syringes and everything, yeah. but... But another thing, you know, he got acquitted of all his, you know, charges and everything. Um, it's I think it's the voters are old timers. Yeah, That's it's what, just you know. I, I just think it's ridiculous. Um, Barry Bonds was still hitting home runs. He didn't. Yeah, he did not need steroids. He may not <laughs> have know? hit as many as he did, but he, didn't, he was still he didn't hitting steroids. Yeah, uh, he's he, still hitting home runs. He did not need steroids to do um, to hit home runs. You know, Roger Clemens was still, you know, striking dudes yeah. out. He was still throwing hard. It might have helped him. Go a little but, bit further in yeah, his career. But that's but the most disappointing part, though, that they didn't yeah, even need him. Exactly. So, I mean, and, and like, can, that's my thing. Like, you don't need, like, these players don't need steroids. Yeah. It might have helped, but you still need to know how to hit a 95 mile per hour yeah. fastball. You still have to, you know, you still have to have the pitches still need to, to throw. To locate. You know, yeah, exactly. So it's just, you know, like it's agree to disagree on getting in and yeah. not getting in because you can see it as you know as yeah. we just did you can see it both ways so yeah. it's like it's if tough. you go if you go to a soccer player and shoot him up with steroids tell him go you know go into the batter's box and hit a 95 mile per hour fastball yeah. i guarantee he doesn't touch exactly. it exactly so it's just you know you have to have the timing you have to have the eye you know it's just it's i that's how i feel yeah. i feel like they should have made it I don't. I don't think that they should get, you know, punished yeah, for not even, for doing. I, it. I, I agree with you, but it's just that the voters are just so old yeah. time. Yeah, they are, they're not going to want them in the Hall of Fame with, you know, with the best yeah. because of what they did, and it's it, it's a shame in a way because you know yeah. we were, we're talking about Barry Bonds, the all time home run. Yeah, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. And you know what? And look at look at the sports. And I'm not saying, oh, you know, everybody should go out and start doing steroids yeah. in sports. I, and I'm I'm not saying that. Of course not. But I can guarantee 95% of players in the NFL are They're doing some something. kind of something. HGH, HGH or steroids. Yeah. Um, and, and it's starting to be shown because with the whole Javon Belcher thing, yeah. it was because of what he was taking. Because and of the just, pills he was just taking. Just the way – now, and I'm not going to come out and say, oh – he did steroids here, but Adrian Peterson torn ACL. Yeah, it's just totally mangled his knee and comes back less than a year. It's it's been floating around out there. Like, yeah, well, it seems I mean, like let's a be serious. Bit, yeah, he something. comes back better than ever. And then you look at Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose t- tore his ACL, and he hasn't been back in almost a year and a half. Yeah. So it's just you know, like you got to think at some of these things and. With the whole CBA with the NFL, their their big thing was, you know, uh, blood testing. Yeah, they don't have that in the in the NFL. So you know that's the way that's the way you find out if there's HGH, and they're they're obviously finding they're trying to find different tests that they can do to find it. Yeah, and I, but I mean, I wouldn't be like as much as I like Peterson. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be hope, surprised. I would not be surprised if something I would came out. Absolutely not. Like be a couple, surprised. like couple, even a yeah. couple years down the road or something. I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. Because, but like you look at it, like I feel like hits are harder. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, guys are quicker than ever. Yeah. Really, I mean, it's and just then, like the ACL thing is a really like a good point though because ACL used to be like the marquee injury. Like if you yeah. tore your if ACL, you tore your ACL, you were you're done. done. Yeah. And I mean, I know 
times advanced and surgeries have advanced and all yeah. that, but it is still uh eight to ten months at exactly. least exactly. process. And that's and you know, that's the minimum. 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 You know, it's you, like eight to ten and you're still need to rehab and exactly. but he we're talking he injured in what, December twenty fourth last year? Yeah. Not this pre- previous year, two thousand eleven. Yeah. And he was back start of the season, which is what, September? Yeah. So we're talking That's less than a year. Yeah, that we're talking nine, ten months. Yeah. And not only was he like just back from the surgery, he was back in football shape. Yeah. Better than better ever. Better than ever. Better, better than ever. That's that's so, something. I mean like, like I said, I'm not coming out and saying, oh, everybody in the NFL is doing uh, like HGH or steroids. I can see it. I can like, see it, I too. would not be surprised. No, not at all. Um, but, you know, with baseball, I just feel like it it did make the sport better. And that, those times in baseball when no one knew about the steroids, it was one of baseball the best, was, it was one of the, the best. biggest, probably yeah. the biggest sport at the time. Exactly. I mean, you you have Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds. Just battling. You know, it's just... Yeah. So it, it was it was definitely good. You know, it's so, like, obviously, home runs sell tickets. Yeah, um, exactly. And now, like, you look at it now, it's more pitching. And look at the Giants. They yeah. just won with pretty much yeah. pitching. So so the last two the last two World Series winners are, yep. you know, all pitching. And now, uh, just one last thing with the baseball, they actually also just added more tests to yeah. uh, find HGH and all <laughs> that stuff. And yet, football has nothing. nothing. So, but uh, that is it till next week. Yep. Um, we'll be back probably Wednesday. Yeah. Maybe even Monday. We might we might do a three three show week. Uh, we'll let you guys know on Facebook or Twitter. Um, but that is it for the Tom and Jerry show. I'm Jerry and I'm Tom. Be breezy. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Tom and Jerry show. 